Hey everybody, what's up? I am Dunbar Snack Bar. I'm here with my man Teza Dude for an episode of In the Bullpen. That's what we decided to go ahead and name it. So this is going to be awesome. We've got the first episode here of the regular season. Tom, what is up, man? Hey man, how's it going? I'm so glad to be back for this. It feels like it's been too long, uh, despite the fact that we did say it was going to be a weekly <laughs> thing. <laughs> No, I know, and we'll be doing this, of course, more often as well. I know you've been busy and stuff, and with the lady friend and everything. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, everyone has uh, their cross to bear, it seems. Yeah, that's true. I guess there's a lot worse than the lady friend, though. But um, anyway, man, I'm excited. Opening season started up. Um, indeed. A lot of games that I, I got a chance to watch at least parts of. I, I don't think I've been able to watch an entire game quite yet, but... I don't know. Have you been able to watch any all the way through? I've been watching uh, the Cubs, obviously. Um, not like really whole, all the way through from start to finish, but watching the majority of the game and like just flicking off now and then when I've got to go and do stuff. But yeah, I've been watching the Cubs, and we're not looking too bad. I mean, uh, we are uh, <coughs> tied for the top of the uh, National League Central. Only 159 days to go. I Woo. think we can do it this year, Cubbies. Well, the Astros, they uh, beat... The, they beat Texas at the beginning, so they were 1-0 for a while, and they were on top of the American League West. So I guess they can say they were up there for one day. Uh-huh. Oh, no, I've just checked the standings because we got beat tonight and Cincinnati won. We're currently second, but still, who cares, Cubbies? We literally just became second, only just. <laughs> <laughs> we're nearly there. So which, which opening series were you most excited about? Uh, I am really... Uh, I was really looking forward to seeing kind of... Texas, especially with this whole new Darvish thing. Yeah. Actually seeing how the Texas, the Texas, sorry, the Rangers are going to deal without Hamilton is uh, something I was kind of quite interested in. Yeah, that'll be interesting. He got booed today. He did. He did get booed today. I was kind of expecting it. Yeah, he was never going to get a rosy reception. He was never <laughs> going to get an each row reception, was he? <laughs> no, no standing O there. No, he didn't need to. Uh, how about yourself? Um, there was a couple opening series that I was following pretty closely. One, uh, Red Sox and Yankees. Uh, that was one. I'm just like, all right, first game of the year because of the rivalry and everything. I got to watch the game. So that was actually the first game that I watched. Um, the A's, I was of course watching that to kind of see how they started things off. But the one that I really paid the most attention to was the Angels and the Reds because both of those teams I have going pretty far in the postseason. So I was like, ooh, this could be a potential World Series matchup like right from the get-go. So I would agree. I can definitely see the Reds being up there and we said we weren't going to talk about too much Yeah, uh, you know, where we can see the teams at the end of the season and who's going to make the playoffs. But the Angels have really done some... They haven't done the Blue Jays kind of way of things and no disrespect to any Blue Jays fans uh, but they haven't just bought big ego names and just thrown them all into one team hoping it'll work like Miami kind of did last season mm -hmm. the Angels have been a bit more strategical and uh, whether that's down to the staff or just because they couldn't afford to do what the Blue Jays could you know wanted to do or like Miami mm -hmm. uh, but I personally think that the Angels have been really clever about their trades and they have got potential this season yeah and I mean like I think Trout's just a great story of, like, the Angels organization, you know, because it's not like they're buying all of their talent, you know, because I understand, you know, with Hamilton and Pujols, those are the big names. But then you got, you know, like, Trout. They didn't buy Trout from anybody. I mean... No, homegrown talent. Exactly. Gone through their organization and everything, so... Yeah, exactly. And, and Mark Trumbo. Yeah. Dear me, that man can smash him. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be there to see a Trumbo. Hey, one day. <laughs> one day dude <laughs> but those are those are what we kind of were, were most looking forward to and then like I said previously how I was really looking to see how the Rangers were going to do especially with losing Hamilton mm -hmm. and then straight off the bat you Darvish that is uh, something that we were definitely quite looking forward to discussing oh my gosh uh, we were both completely shocked by the fact that what was it the first second game I can't remember yeah I think it was game two yeah and he was going for a for a perfect game and oh, felt so sorry for him two outs in the ninth was it something along those yeah. lines and, yeah oh man i'd be so devastated bottom of the ninth Can't... two outs and it just goes right between his legs i would cry so okay i was gonna ask you this um all right so you're up at the plate bottom of the ninth two outs okay you're hitting 
do you still try to swing for it, or do you let this man have his perfect game? Oh no, that is such um, such a hard question. That just depends, in my opinion, how much respect you have for the guy, yeah, or how much respect you have for the team, and also, do you want to be the one that oh, you were the last guy and you gave away the perfect game, or do you want to be the guy that snatched it and ruined the first perfect game of the season? Yeah. That's a tough one because it's like, I don't know, maybe I'm just too nice, but I might let some stuff go a little bit. Because, I mean, it, it wouldn't be just on you. I mean, 26 other guys right before you also failed in their attempt. You've failed twice already by the time you get up to the plate. Yeah. I don't know. Like, part of me says, like, yeah, I would let him have it because obviously he has earned that. But He has been the better man at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, you've been all outdone already. What? What are you gaining from getting one hit other than being an absolute nasty person? Yeah, and I do you remember what the score was in that one? I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's I mean it's not like you were going to get a two two out rally to really overcome Texas at that point. No, it, the game was lost. Yeah, uh, I don't remember the score, but I do believe it was lost. So no, that is a hard question and unlucky to you, Darvish. I he's such a good pitcher. I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if he's going for another one in the coming seasons. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he's an incredible pitcher with a lot of talent, and I wouldn't expect it to be the last time we see him doing that kind of thing. So, unlucky, admittedly. Um, he probably cried himself to sleep that night. <laughs> <laughs> I would but, be uh, celebrating. I mean, if I, I can go that far in Major League Baseball, I'd be so excited. Mm. But you've got to think he's gone so far. He has, you know, if it had lost his perfect game in the seventh or eighth inning, like, that's okay, you can say, you know, I went seven or eight innings without well, here. Mm -hmm. I was clearly just on form. And now, the, you know, the closer can come in and just, just finish up what I obviously can't do at this point. But when you get to the ninth, you're just thinking, this is it. Like, then I would definitely be devastated, sure, of, of you know, taking out, like, 26 other people or whatever, you know. That point, I would be upset. Like, if I'd have lost it in the seventh or eighth, I could probably deal with it. At the ninth with two outs... I, how he didn't blow his own brains out <laughs> you know it's just so hard for someone right so i i know i brought this question up to you earlier um do you think that the success you darvish had is because of him being a good pitcher or do you think it was because the astros are that bad <laughs> no do i want to upset people is the question <laughs> um no disrespect to astros fans you, you and you must know this. It's like I'm a Cubs fan. I have no room to speak. Um, Astros aren't an amazing team, but you still don't want to take anything away from you, Darvish. Not that it was just you, Darvish, and not just because the Astros are, are bad. But if it had been against any other team, would he have done the same? You don't know. But if it had been any other pitcher against the Astros, would it have been the same? There's too many variables to say who's better or worse in a scenario. Um, but it seems like the Houston that Houston on that night were doing pretty terrible. Um, you know, there was a lot of fouls and stuff. and then, But then again, you can't just put it all down to you, Darvish, and you've then got to say the outfield must have done a fantastic job or the infield. Yeah. You know, he didn't strike out 26 guys, did he? Or whatever, you know. He, the defense had a big part to play, so it isn't just down to you, Darvish, and it isn't just down to the Astros. Mm -hmm. It's a team game at the end of the day. You're right. I mean, to have a perfect game, you have to have no errors whatsoever. So your shortstop's got to make the throw over to first. Your center fielder can't lose the ball in the lights and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I think it goes both ways on that one. I mean, if there was a you know better team up at the plate, again, no offense, but you know, I, I don't think he would have been able to go that far. But at the same time, it's not like the Astros every game since have – you know, been going that far too so that really says something about texas as a whole yeah indeed i mean they are three and one right now mm -hmm. um, but you ex like I, I completely expected that from someone like texas i do believe that they will still win a world world series soon mm -hmm. uh, you can't go two or three years like get into the playoffs every time and visit in a final twice mm -hmm. and uh, and win nothing you know a few years down the line sure they've had uh, bits of bad luck with injuries now and then, but uh, every team's got to deal with it. Yeah. But I do believe that they will be there, and they are one of the strongest sides in the American League. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. All right, so um, I know we kind of wanted to answer a few questions from you know people who had posted stuff in our videos. So since 
uh, viewer input is absolutely important. Of course, you guys submit questions, and if there's stuff that we like, we'll, of course, talk about them here on In the Bullpen. And so we kind of wanted to go to one of them, which was asking us about what we thought uh, with the Yankees and all of their injuries thus far. Tom, I'll let you go at that one first. Yeah, so obviously Eduardo, however you say his Nunez. surname. Nunez. Nunez, <laughs> that's the one. Uh, obviously he is out, and then there is a bunch of other names out. Jeter, uh, Teixeira, A-Rod. And it's really not looking good for the uh, for the Yankees at the moment. This is this is going to, you know, hit them really hard, and they are going to struggle. They are currently uh, one and three, sitting at the bottom of the uh, American League East, and not what they probably wanted to start. Especially mm -hmm. this, since they've said, "Oh well, can we do without A Rod? Who knows?" And then they've gone out uh, with a goal to show them, prove themselves, and it's not paid off so far. And the disabled list is is fast building up. Who who did you say that is, they've only got one player left for infield? Yeah, on the 40-man roster, they only have one player left. Um, as long as Eduardo Nunez is out, I mean, since he's day-to-day, -day, I mean, I don't think that he's going to necessarily be out for that long. But, um, gosh, I can't remember who they have left right now. But, yeah, there's just, just one infielder is what I was reading from a Yankees blog. So that, that, that is going to put the Yankees in a bit of trouble, uh, in my opinion. I don't know how long Teixeira is out for. I don't know how long Jeet is out for. And A-Rod still has about a thousand years worth of surgery left to do. Um, but it's really not going to help them. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can see kind of Boston having a little bit of a smirk um, on their faces. Just kind of, this could be definitely a better season for Boston this year anyway mm -hmm. and then especially just to finish clear of the Yankees would absolutely just do it for them yeah I mean this this really hurts for him I I can see the Yankees finishing you know in uh, in the bottom of the American League East I mean that's just how um, absolutely how big absolutely. this is because like yeah so you got Jeter Granderson Arod and Teixeira all right so let's this this is how big it hurts all right so Jeter's making 17 million dollars this year Granderson ten, A Rod twenty nine million, Teixeira twenty two and a half, so that comes to a grand total of seventy eight point five million dollars on the disabled list. And you figure you totally did that off the top of your head. Oh, totally off the top of my head. <laughs> I think no, no calculator, no nothing. But um, yeah, that's three Astros teams basically put together. In pay. Yeah, and, and, and you think you're spending that much money just to keep a bench warm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, you got A-Rod being paid this much. It's going to be impossible to be able to deal him out to another team without, you know, paying him to basically play against you. So, I mean, this is, this is bad. So, basically right now the Yankees pitching staff has been relatively untouched by injuries, but that's only half of the ball game right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it will really hurt them. It will really hurt them. And do I want to slag off the Yankees? Um, no, because you can't deny they're still an incredible side with or without, you know, um, A-Rod and Granderson. You've got to remember, them, they're going to come back at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't know the extent of all their injuries. They're going to come back, and they're going to come back fierce with the one of revenge and this, that, and the other. Yeah. You know, they're going to have a lot of drive to do well this season. Um, or it's going to hurt them more than anything. It's going to hurt their paychecks, and it's going to hurt the Yankees as a, in general. The, the, obviously, the Yankees will never struggle for money. Um, right. But it'll just not be the same for a while mm -hmm. if they don't do well this season. So, I, mean, I don't know. I still wouldn't count them out, but I just can't see them finishing as high as you would expect. Right. I mean, they've done... I mean, an all right job getting some people to kind of make up for everything. Like, you know, you got Vernon Wells uh, playing left. You got Lyle Overbay. You got Uke over there at third. So, I mean, they've they've gotten some talent, of course, um, you know, added to the team here. But still, I don't think it makes up for everybody who is out. And, like, I know, I know Jeter is getting older, but the leadership that he brings, you know, to the team, that's something you really can't buy. No, exactly. You know, everything, everyone in every, there, yeah, every team in sport has like a leader of men, whether it be, you know, baseball or whether it's American football or whether it, I say American football sounds so English when I say that, <laughs> whether it's the NFL, whether it's the NBA, whether it's the, you know, the NHL, there is always a leader and you always need someone to carry in. If you don't have that, mm -hmm. 
you know, what, what do you have? You need someone who, who will be in the bullpen and who isn't a manager and who will... My phone's going off. Yeah. And who will be on the same level as you. You know, this person's playing the sport with you. He's playing alongside you. He knows how it feels. Mm -hmm. And if you have that person to motivate you, it feels so much better. I've had it uh, playing football, uh, soccer, you know, in, in my country. And when you have a captain, you know, it's, it's when you get shouted out by the manager um, and then the... You know, the captain comes along and he'll pat you on the back and he'll say, you know, I understand. I've been in similar positions. It's someone who's on the field with you mm -hmm. at the same time. And if you lack that, it hurts. Right. I mean, it's not like Jeter's out completely. I mean, he'll still be helping the team out from, you know, the dugout. But still, you're going to miss that presence on the field for sure. Yeah, exactly. Is it weird seeing you in a Yankee uniform? It is, personally. I agree. I, 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 I have a lot of time for Boston. Uh, I do really like the Red Sox as a team. When I was getting into baseball many years ago, I really enjoyed watching the Red Sox win, mm -hmm. but especially back in 2007, obviously. Um, so, you know, I really like the Red Sox and I have a lot of time for the Red Sox. I was a bit, you know, uh, gutted when Euclid left. And then to see him go to the Yankees is just... Oh, yeah. Ew. It's like, ew, because why... Yeah, I mean, like, 04 to 2012, Uke was in a Red Sox uni, and now he's going up against the arch rival, too. And, you know, think how many big games they had between 2004 and 2012 against the Yankees and how big Euclid was a part of that. But Yeah, exactly. He, he has done a lot for the Red Sox um, against the Yankees and against any other team. He's just a good player. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel wrong, but it just doesn't seem right, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. I'm not just like, oh, well, I'm not watching the Yankees or anymore because, it, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, but it's just like, eh. You know, like when Ichiro left Seattle, I didn't feel too bad, despite the fact that it was an integral part of Seattle. Yeah. But this is just, it's like, yeah. Yeah. That is like, um, in soccer terms, you know, like Wayne Rooney leaving United to go to Manchester City. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I, just, I wouldn't stop watching football because of it, but it'd just be wrong. Yeah. Big game Monday. Indeed. Derby. Woo! Come on, United. <laughs> <laughs> Off topic, but yeah. Oh, you're good. <laughs> All right, so... Yeah, should we answer that pr question pretty good, I think, but... I think we did. I think we went rather in-depth. <laughs> uh, Trout sophomore season. How do you think he's going to do this year? Who knows? You, you've got to remember Mike Trout is... We, we were talking about him before when we were talking about the notes that we're making for this. Mike mm -hmm. Trout is just a good player. Oh, yeah. I think you did, didn't you send me his stats or something? Yep. Yeah, he, he's just got crazy stats. It's just... And he's and the fact that he's homegrown, just it's just one thing you can't buy. They haven't bought him. They've just brought him through the ranks. And there's nothing better than seeing a youngster just perform and do so well. And he's such a good, like, good defensive player as well as a good offensive player. Mm -hmm. He's so all-round and... I reckon he'll have an, an, an incredible season. Oh, yeah. Best value player, definitely, in Major League Baseball. Except when his contract runs up, and then he's available to go anywhere, and, gosh, he's going to have a pretty high price tag. But, yeah, so to kind of measure this season, we don't have too much really to go off of. So it's kind of speculation. We can go off of spring training stats, and you know, here's kind of what he had. He had a 350 batting average with a 466 on base percentage. Um, his slugging was 617. That's pretty good. So uh, two home runs during that time, 14 RBIs, six stolen bases. That's pretty good in the 23 games that he ended up playing in spring training. I, I mean, this guy was MVP quality in his rookie season. I mean, if it wasn't for Miguel Cabrera, you know, hitting as well as he did during that time, I think that we would have seen Trout be the MVP. I agree. I, I do think someone so young to be so talented is it's hard not to give him, you know, such praise and such a praise in the form of an MVP. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like you figure with all the pressure that you have during your rookie season, um, you know, a lot of unknowns and stuff like that. I think he did an amazing job, more than people give him credit for, and he gets a lot of credit for you know, the great season that he had. So, yes, I can see him having another season just like he had last year, and I don't, I'm don't, i not surprised if this guy's MVP. Uh, without a doubt, he's definitely going to be uh, a candidate. Can you see any other big names um, 
or sorry, small names doing it uh, as consistently. I wouldn't be surprised if this would be one of Stalin Castro's better years. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, because he hasn't had, he's not been a world beater, but he's been an incredible shortstop for the Cubs, mm -hmm. and he's had very consistent seasons. Some patches, you know, yeah, small patches of, you know, not such a good run. Um, but he's developed into such a good player over the years, and I'm not sure the age difference between Castro and Trout, mm -hmm. uh, but I believe that Castro is at the age now where he will start to become world class. Yeah. So other than that, I actually couldn't name, uh, because I'm not as up-to-date as you with every <laughs> player in the league, um, but I couldn't name like another young player that can be as good as Trout. Yeah, I mean... Bryce Harper, Trout, that's always a good discussion to be able to have on which one of the two is better, but um, gosh, I think both of them are going to have great, great seasons this year. Oh, for sure. Uh, Alright, um, let's move on to the next question that we got, which uh, revolves around Terry Francona. Um, Indeed. This is all you, man. Okay, well, I, w I would start this one because Indians are one of the team that I'm quite uh, up to date with ish uh, because one of my friends is an Indians fan and he was so pleased when uh, the news came through of Terry Francona coming through you just can't deny uh, Terry Francona's statistics he is such a good manager uh, he's a good player manager as well as a smart manager a strategical and I reckon he'd be like someone good to actually get a team talk off mm -hmm. like this man has seen glory he has seen defeat and when the Red Sox kind of let him go, I personally thought that was a mistake. And the Indians have, you know, picked up on, not picked up on because you can't deny it, but I've just obviously are aware of how good he is. And I've made the right decision, in my opinion, taking him on because I believe it will help the Indians. He's made some good trades already. Who did they get from the Yankees again? I can't remember off the top of my oh. head. Um, anyway, so, yeah, he's made some good trades already. And... The Indians did well in spring training. They had a good start, then they had a bit of a flop, and then they brought it back again to end on average. Uh, everyone's going to go through their bad patches, but to start off as well as they did, I believe that is a sign that they will have a good season under Francona because he is a fantastic manager. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It was Nick Swisher. I just remembered. Nick Swisher. Well played. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, so he's, he's brought Nick Swisher in. Uh, obviously, he is already very well known so he can pull those kind of strings and bring, bring people like Nick Swisher uh, to the Indians because uh, he's got such a good reputation and he's been with you know he's been in the league for so long mm -hmm. you know it's the it's the power that uh, he had to to use essentially like when Pinella came to the Corbs he brought Soriano with him and it's just that I can't think of the word <laughs> um, just essentially where you're a good manager and people want to play for you oh yeah i mean with like francona definitely has some tools to be able to play with because i mean you got swisher and then um gosh names oh michael Bourne. gosh i'm doing so bad with names when it comes to the indians <laughs> so i mean he's got some tools to be able to win some games uh, i don't think he has enough really to overtake the tigers in the central but i can see him in the indians you know finishing a good solid second there um but yeah francona Great, great manager, especially when you figure what he did with the Red Sox. Uh, the only negative thing I can think about him, of course, was the beer and chicken incident and all that that took place that eventually <laughs> got him out of out of Boston. But I don't blame him for that completely. You know, I mean, as a manager, yes, you have some responsibility to know what's going on and to, you know, create, um, you know, that positive type of mentality with your team. If they're doing that, I mean, I don't think that's appropriate. But at the same time, he wasn't the one who bought, like, the chicken and beer. He wasn't the one who was eating and drinking it. You know, it was the whole team. So, I mean, as a manager, I think this is a great pickup for the Indians. I think it's just phenomenal um, and what he's going to do for them. Well, without a doubt. And um, also, he got rid of uh, Shinsu Chu, didn't he? Mm-hmm. To the Reds. So that's going to bring in a bit of money for them. So he's got even more to play about with. Oh, yeah. So he's, he's been very clever, and he will continue to be very clever, I believe, and do good with the Indians, because the Indians have never had a bad side. Mm -hmm. They've just never had an incredible side. And what would you say? They give Francona two years, maybe, two seasons? Yeah, I mean... Uh, it... no. Oh, go ahead. 
you know, done, they'll be taking on the Tigers for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, like, as the Tigers age, I can see the Indians starting to come up there. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's building a young squad with a bit of leadership, such as Swisher and stuff. Um, so the mix of the youngsters and, you know, that those oldies, a uh, couple of years' time, you will have a, a, a good team, a playoff potential team. Mm -hmm, for sure. Gosh, Nick Swisher, he just seems like a great guy to spend time with. <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah, I'd like to spend time with Frank Cohen just to know like what was going through his head when that whole bear and chicken thing was going on. Yeah, that was just craziness. But <laughs> at the same time, like you said, team was the one who did it and lost it. So. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that's all the questions we've got. We've got a something to celebrate on here, don't we, Tom? We do indeed. It is a nice. It's a nice little one. It's a nice way to end it, I reckon. Right on. <laughs> so. Uh, as many of you should know, if you are avid baseball fans, for those who aren't avid baseball fans or don't live in Colorado, the Colorado Rockies are 20 years old. Woo, two decades. That is crazy. They've been competing uh, in Major League Baseball for 20 years. Uh, still never really won anything, but uh, could the, the Rockies are a team I actually really like, and Coors Field just looks so nice. I'd love to visit it. Oh, man, it was great. I, I went to a game where they played the Braves, and... George W. Bush was there, and Secret Service was everywhere and stuff. It was, it was pretty crazy. But that was the only time I actually saw him. <laughs> oh, I would be more interested in the baseball person. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, I, I've got Chipper Jones on the field right in front of me. That was, that was memorable in and of itself. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's cool. Twenty years young, they're still one of the younger teams in baseball. Indeed, alongside people like, wait, is it the Blue Jays, one of the younger ones? Uh, um, Arizona? Yeah, Arizona and Tampa Bay, they got started up in 98. I'm trying to remember what baseball team, besides the Rockies, were an expansion team. Uh, uh, well, the Washington are very young, aren't they? Kind of. If you, if you think about it. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. there was a Washington Nationals a long time ago. Um, so they kind of brought it back. Yeah, they've been uh, around. Oh, I, can't, I know who you mean, but I can't think of who the other one is. Was it... Was it the Expos? You started then? I'm having a look. Oh, Mar <laughs> Marlins. Why did I think the Expos? No, Marlins and Rockies started in the 93 season. Well, went back when they were the Florida Marlins. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, there you go. They are still one of the younger teams in baseball. They're a nice team. I enjoy playing them. Yeah, I enjoy watching them play. And also, yeah, I've just brought this up. Uh, it comes up. Hang on, what? Hmm. What, what, what? Uh, yeah, Tampa are the youngest. Uh, they're like 16 years old or something. Yep, 1998. That's crazy. Uh, then Arizona, Miami, Colorado. Uh, the rest is kind of irrelevant because they're all just, you know, teams that have folded and then reopened again under a different name. A lot of history. Yeah, with teams with a lot of history. <laughs> yeah. Like, Braves are the longest consecutive running team in... Should be the course. <laughs> anyway. Well, good episode. Indeed. So, yeah, anyway, happy birthday to the Rockies. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. So, appreciate you guys coming by, watching In the Bullpen. Remember, I'm Dunbar Snack Bar. That's Tezza Dude. So, feel free to subscribe to our channels. We're going to do this a lot more often than, gosh, once a month. <laughs> but, oh, no, yeah, every two weeks. Yeah. So, we'll make sure we get this going. So, make sure you subscribe to our channels. Um, Tom, it was great. It's been emotional, dude. <laughs> We shared a few laughs, laughs. We cried. If we have. We have indeed. Right on. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll check you later. Indeed. Cheerio.